Hey everyone, it's Ivan, KeepBadger.com, out here for part three in my carnivore journey. So where are we now? Well, we're back to some more blood work. If you've been following along, I initially basically went and got a bunch of labs done before I started, and then having started my carnivore journey, eating very strict, basically just meat, organ meat, fats, stuff like that, and salt and water, went for a month revisited that and got those labs back and there were definitely some changes and continuing on that path for that second month went back in got more blood drawn and went that following week so i guess i got blood drawn a week ago today as of filming this went back in about a week later sat down with the doctor and went over all of the labs as far as some of the kind of like we'll hit the high points real quick I guess starting with my LDL particle number, LDLP. And when I first started this, it was at 1995, which is high. Like basically anything over 2000 is very high. One month in, it had jumped to 3,218, which is very high, a lot higher than that 2000 marker. Now, when I went in, basically it just says, over 3,500. So at the lab, in the facility, like where they test it, doesn't register over 3,500. So my LDLP went, continued to go up somewhere north of 3,500. As far as lipids, LDLC, that initially was at 181, which I guess was already, already high and that pushed up to 307 after one month and now two months in it went up to 398 very high as anything above 189 very high uh hdlc which is like air quotes good cholesterol started initially at 63 one month in it went up to 66 and it is now at 79 which is good, it's continuing to go up, and that's a very good thing. Triglycerides went from initially 68 to I think 108, and then dropped back down to 88. I say 88 at that two month mark. And something that was interesting too is small LDL particles. So this one, Basically, you want larger LDL particles. The smaller the particles are, the easier they can pass through membranes that you ideally don't really want them passing through, as it's explained to me. And so initially, they were at 543, and then they ended up spiking some during that first month of carnivore up to 636, and now they drop back to 460, which is a good thing. We want those to ideally come down. And then kind of moving on to some other just kind of interesting things is insulin resistance. Initially, my insulin resistance was at 25. And then after that, it was somewhere south of 25. Again, getting to where like they can't measure it at the lab. And again, it is still somewhere under 25. So that's definitely a really good marker right there. And then the other one that I was actually really curious about is, make sure I have it. Yeah, was the vitamin D. So initially when I came into this, looking at that first blood lab from before I started carnivore to one month in, I'd gone from 22.9 to 20.7 with respect to vitamin D. Yes, vitamin D putting me into deficiency, like actually deficient in vitamin D. So something I've done is started to supplement vitamin D. I think 5,000 international units, if that sounds right, 500 or 5,000, I don't remember which, but supplementing vitamin D daily. And I saw that increase from 20.7 to 28.9 just over the course of this last month. So that's definitely a positive. And then the other, the other kind of big one is C-reactive protein. 
uh, cardiac, which is kind of one of those where it's used for a number of different things. One as kind of a metric with respect to your chance for like cardiac issues, like gonna have a heart attack, cardiovascular event. The other one, I believe also basically used as a marker for inflammation in the body. And so initially in, I guess with respect to like the norms, ideally something below one, one to 3.0 is average, anything over three is considered high. And so initially my C-reactive protein was 0.63. After one month, 30 days in the carnivore, it actually dropped to 0.46. And it is now after two months, 60 days, dropped to 0.26. Definitely not really a risk factor, which is interesting because then when you contrast that with start looking at like percentile charts and things like that where like it doesn't make sense kind of on its face with conventional wisdom because my cholesterol is like off the chart right but at the same time like all the other markers aren't really there and so everything largely is more or less kind of in the green and things like that and it's been interesting going on this journey, especially just following those numbers and looking at things, but it's weird because there's not a lot of context because America is largely really, really unhealthy. And so when people have high pro or high protein, when people have like high cholesterol, they get put on statins, all these other things. Keep in mind, most of these things are lifestyle diseases. Like, People can probably change it, like type two diabetes, surprise, you did that to yourself. All these different things largely can get changed with diet and exercise, like that magic recipe. But because I'm in a weird spot with high cholesterol because of how I'm eating like lots of fat and meat and things like that, it like at a glance puts me in this super high risk category, but all the other markers are really low, so there's that. It's kind of weird, but that right there is kind of the rundown on two months in my blood work into the carnivore. A few things worth mentioning over the last two months it's been pretty strict carnivore and with that also did a really good job for about a month and a half with food log and kind of like sleep log. I eventually just stopped. It became so tedious trying to track everything and then at the end of it is like okay well i'm just gonna eat and until i'm satiated and like moving on so i stopped doing that it would probably be cool if i had it but i didn't because it was just incredibly tedious and i ended up stopping that but i did stay pretty strict carnivore one thing i will say is getting enough fat is like that's kind of that's kind of the hurdle and so I've been cooking a lot of game meat, like deer and elk that my son and I have got this last year. And it's awesome, but it's also super lean. So trying to get fat into that. So one, I pretty much cook everything in tallow, ended up with a big bucket of grass-fed beef tallow. And then the other one ended up incorporating butter because one, I need more fat and two, butter and like on a whole like up to this point like dairy hasn't been an issue for me i know a lot of people have a hard time with dairy and ideally you'd end up making ghee because you get rid of some of the stuff that usually ends up bothering people i haven't done that again part of it's a time factor part of it is like traveling and trying to make sure i get enough fat so it would turn into me basically cooking like elk and be in like a little Tupperware container and then we end up going somewhere, ended up going down to Thunder Ranch. I'd cooked up a bunch of like elk steaks, but it's really lean. So end up with some like salted grass fed butter, cut off slabs of butter and eat that steak with slabs of butter, which honestly tastes really good. So I've definitely started kind of midway through that second month incorporating more butter just because trying to get enough fat in the diet but largely with the inclusion of butter 
everything's been really strict for those first two months. I will say after I got that second blood test, I was like, you know what? I really enjoy coffee. I'm going to reincorporate that. As far as like really strict carnivore goes, coffee's not in there. I will say I had coffee twice, somewhere in that window of the second month, social occasions. And something that honestly resonated with me in that book, The Carnivore Code, was basically like live your life to where you end up, I guess, purposely, purposefully to enjoy your life. And so to that end, the idea of like, oh, well, I'm gonna be really strict and never do this, even if maybe a social occasion calls for it. Like whether it's just having like a little piece of cake for like your kid's birthday party or going out to meet someone and having a cup of coffee, like socially, like, okay, cool. And no, I haven't had any cake, but I did add coffee twice. And I've also realized that no, like I actually like that, I enjoy that. So I'm gonna go ahead and reincorporate it moving forward after that two month mark. I will say, after I got that blood draw, the other thing that I did with my boys is we ended up going and having ice cream. I love ice cream. And yes, it is not carnivore, but we ended up going and I think Briars, like their like original natural ice cream, milk, eggs, sugar, vanilla flavoring. So nothing crazy, but yeah, my boys and I had some ice cream. It was pretty delicious. I will say it's been kind of difficult to get the nutrients I think my body probably wants from a bunch of organ meats. Just because only have so many livers and hearts we got from our elk and deer. And to that end, we've absolutely been eating that to include some deer heart. My boys and I love that. And trying to incorporate stuff like that wherever I can. And to that end, that cookbook I mentioned amazing cookbook, definitely made some interesting recipes in it, one of which is carnivore waffles. Made them, I guess we made them out of elk. Pretty amazing, like you, yeah, you end up blending these things up and put them in there and yeah, they come out like waffles. They actually taste really, really good. The other thing I tried making was, or I did make, uh, foie gras, is that right? Where you basically cook in oil and so cubed a bunch of elk steak and ended up cooking that in this cast iron skillet and a bunch of beef tallow. That was actually really tasty. But to the end of trying to just get more organ meat and stuff like that in my diet, looking at supplementing that somewhat. And to that end, gonna try some of these, which are, yeah, grass-fed beef organs basically from New Zealand, grass-fed, grass-finished cows, liver, heart, kidney, pancreas, and spleen. So moving forward, going to be incorporating this for probably the next month or two, kind of see where we are. And then something that I tried a while back and had done good things for me, but just want to basically revisit it. And that is the full spectrum full spectrum, yeah, CBD oil from Uncana. Yes, it's full spectrum. There's a tiny bit of THC in there. Like, no, you're not gonna get high. It's like 0.3% or something like that. It's, yeah, 0.3% THC. So not measurable in my experience. I remember when I kind of went down the road of uh, the Uncana and trying it for a couple months. One, there was definitely some positive benefits, but I also ended up going and taking your analysis, like it never showed up. Sample size of one, but yeah. So gonna be basically incorporating these two moving forward. Where does this put me moving forward? Well, I am going to continue with this carnivore journey. Am I gonna be super strict? No, not necessarily. One, I'm gonna introduce, or as I mentioned, I have started reintroducing coffee. I enjoy it and for me, it does a good job with respect to energy and things along those lines and just kind of helping throughout the day. To the end of energy, something that's been interesting is just kind of looking at my energy level like throughout the day to include during activities. And so if you think about your energy level throughout the day, usually there's these like peaks and valleys because you're eating carbohydrates and blood sugar will spike and crash and all that stuff, which like that's the thing. 
I will say when I am eating carbohydrates and sugars, all of those things, there's definitely like a top end when it comes to physical performance level that is not there with carnivore. And I was talking to a couple buddies because it became apparent when actually I was out with my buddy Bill Rapier and we went for a little ski adventure, skied like six and a half miles uphill and then made our way back down. Numerous hours, about 13 miles. And I was going really strong for that like first half or so. And then I had stopped to, we stopped to have lunch ate some food and then I just couldn't get it back. Like I was, I was burned out. And what it is, is basically this like threshold with respect to output and energy. As it was explained to me and as I've experienced it in that with carnivore, like if your energy levels are like this with conventional eating, carnivore is just like kind of right here. Like it, there's not this crazy high end, top end or anything like that, but there's this really sustained energy to where you can just go indefinitely. And once you break that threshold though, then you can end up getting burned out and then like it takes a while to recover. And that's the place where you wanna actually supplement with some sort of carbohydrates, whether it's like berries or honey or something along those lines. Cause yeah, think about it in running, think about like running for a target heart zone. Like that's, that's kind of with respect to carnivore, like you can, you can put out in that target area like indefinitely. But once you start sprinting or doing like really high output things, like your body doesn't have those quick carbohydrates. So that's a place to supplement. So as I move forward, I probably will given certain activities, whether it's really taxing, like skiing up mountains, things along those lines may start supplementing with, uh, yeah, like I said, honey berries, things along those lines. And lastly, weight and kind of body composition. I think my body basically normalized after that first month of carnivore, getting rid of excess water, things along those lines, to normalizing out, ended up dropping, I think, like 14 pounds to 173 pounds. I am now 172.9 when I jumped on the scale at the two month mark, so 173 pounds. And so I think to that end, basically kind of stabilized at that weight. As far as body composition, has that changed some? I don't know, I don't really remember, but for the sake of contrast, this is me at basically the two month mark. Again, I don't know that body composition changed too much from one month in to two months in, might have leaned out a little bit, but still maintaining that same weight. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and stay the course on this carnivore journey, incorporating, like I mentioned, coffee back in, as well as those desiccated organs and the full spectrum CBD oil from Uncana. And as I see fit, probably bringing in some carbohydrates when it makes sense with respect to my physical output. And yeah, we'll check back in in a bit. Probably not going to do another blood test for about two months. So I did one initially and then one month in, two months in, two months in, and probably do another one four months in. So we'll check back, let you know how I'm doing then. But as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time. <laughs>